Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to a new video on my YouTube channel and on my Facebook page. This lesson is for first year students of technical English and for English literature, the second semester. Okay, let's start by um, explaining some of the, you know, difficult things in this, in this uh, subject. We are, of course, we are, we are not going to explain everything because it's a very uh, deep subject right in this video we are going just to explain some of the difficult things some of the difficult uh, definitions for example some of the main uh, vocabulary main concepts in this you know in this subject okay so first of all we are going to talk about historicism what is historicism uh, the rise of comparative linguistics in the 18th century was catalyzed by william jones pioneer use of the comparative method. Let's ask a question here. What is the comparative linguistics? The comparative linguistics is a branch of historical linguistics, right? We are, talk we are talking here about historicism. And it's it, is it is concerned with comparing languages to establish their historical relatedness, okay? This is the comparative linguistics. We are comparing languages to each other to see their historical relatedness. We are, s we are uh, seeing in Arabic الروابط التاريخية بينها, okay? Um, yes, I guess this is, this, is the, this is it, yes. And there are some works in the comparative linguistics, for example, uh, Dutch Grammatic, and for example, the contributions of Humboldt's inf inflotional contributions and, and this linguist contributions expanded linguistic inquiry to encompass language beyond Indo-European origins. They were just studying Indo-European linguistics. And right now, after the contributions of this linguist, they are studying all the languages. As evidence in uh, his uh, foundational work, right, his book here, and these developments marked a significant progression in linguistic research. Because of these developments, right now we are studying the linguistic in a new way, right? Because of this, these contributions of those linguists shaping the trajectory of this field for years to come. Trajectory is masar in Arabic, right? Uh, I could say, for example, in Arabic, بفضل جهودهم um, because of their efforts, right now we are studying. It's not the same, the linguistic before their, their contributions and after their contributions, okay? So, and then we are going to explain the structuralism. The structuralism, there are some of the difficult things in, in structuralism. There are, for example, diachronic and synchronic and there are long and parole and there, there are uh, sentium and paradigm <coughs> okay uh, we are going to explain them right now okay um, this is our introduction of language as a static system of interconnected units he is a structuralist and the structuralism means that we are studying the language in a state uh, as a static system right Thabit of interconnected units. Interconnected means, you know, and all these concepts are the concepts of Dissasur, right? And along with contributions from scholars like those from the Prague School and others, the Prague Schools, we, we talked about the Prague School in the first semester. That there are linguists in Prague School, for example, Dissasur. They shaped structuralism as a fundamental approach in linguistics. They made the structuralism al in Arabic. In this table, there are the, the differences between the traditional grammar and modern linguistics. For example, traditional grammar is history-based study. Let's say, for example, uh, you know, uh, diachrony examining the historical evolution of a language over time okay they are they was they were studying the historical 
they were studying the historical evolution of a language over time. You know, this is the traditional grammar. And, this, uh, and the, in the modern linguistics synchronic study, the synchronic study is analyzing a language at a specific moment in time, not, not in terms of its historical evolution, right? And in the traditional grammar, they were studying the written aspects of language, and in the, mo in the modern linguistics, uh, they, were, uh, they are studying written and spoken aspects of language. And they were, for example, borrowed models. They, bo they would borrow, for example, models uh, of analysis in traditional language studies. Analytical models might be borrowed from previous traditions such as Latin or, gr or Greek grammar rather than inventing entirely new models they are using the uh, the models of for example latin of grammar of of greek they are not inventing new models right and here in the modern linguistics and in the in the in the modern linguistics they uh, uh, modern linguistics views language as a complete and independent system right uh, without relying on external factors without relying on the old models and and traditional grammar um, language of literary terms and of the linguist himself here the modern linguistics focuses on the structures and raw rules within language itself the modern linguistics focus on the structure and the rules and here we have lack of st standardization and definitions they don't have rules they don't have they don't focus on rules they don't fo focus on structures they don't have uh, you know standard rules right the traditional grammar often doesn't have a cl clear rules of de or definitions for everything. And here in the modern linguistics we have we have unified terminology. We have the same set of words and concepts and here and uh, the modern linguistics is descriptive. It describes the language as it's used by the speakers without prescribing rules for correct usage usage right here the modern linguistics describes language that is used by speakers right and here in the traditional grammar it's prescriptive they for example tends to um uh, you know prescribe rules for correct language usage rather than uh, describing how language is used so here they see the la the language and how it's used without focusing on uh, on the correct usage of rules and here they are focusing of the correct rules and the correct usage of rules in language and here they are focusing on items and here they are focusing on the structures structure centered analysis okay long and parole those words are in french La langue refers to the overarching system of language. It's the whole system of language. It's the grammar, the spelling, uh, the syntax, the punctuation, it represents the social and impersonal aspects of language existing independently of individual speakers. Focus here the social and impersonal aspect of language okay and here parole on the other side it's the personal and contextual use of language so here we are use uh, we are focusing on the language in context that are personal that are used by individuals and we we are here in the long we are not focusing on uh, personal aspects of language we are focusing on the whole system of language okay 
and um, and there are critics for example like Mikhail Bakhtin I think its name is like that uh, he uh, he argued against the strict separation of long and parole he said that um, he said that according to him long language language sorry not long it's the same in english and french is subject to neg negotiation contestation and social stra struggle with modifications occurring at the point of parole to create new meanings okay i explained this in red this means that language is shaped by the social situations and inter interactions between people talking and listening it's simple like that it's based on the context he believed that the language it can change based on how people use it so when people talk or, or write they can create new meanings and interpretations تفسير ومعاني جديدة من خلال السياق he didn't like the fact that long and parole uh, are uh, separated and here we have the synchrony and diachrony uh, we said that synchrony is uh, analyzing language at uh, at a specific moment in time focusing on in on its structure and features without considering historical changes for example studying the syntax كيفيه uh, تركيب American English syntax is syntax is the arrangement of words and phrases هي ترتيب الكلمات والجمل to create well formed sentence sentences in a language okay and diachrony it's examining the historical evolution of a language over time it's tracking changes in structures vocabulary and usage patterns across different historical periods for example studying arabic right from classical times to the present we are studying the historical changes of the language we are studying التغيرات التاريخيه للغه okay this is it and we have also uh, paradigmatic and syntagmatic so the syntagmatic structure it's the linear arrangement of words in a sentence here الترتيب الخطي للكلمات okay for example reflecting their temporal order in speech for example the cat sat on the mat each word's position follow a syntagmatic structure corresponding to its occurrence in time so we are talking here about um, their order in speech the cat came before sat and the verb here come before on and on came before the mat okay so i explained it in a very simple way here imagine you are putting together a delicious delicious sandwich you know each ingredient has to go in a specific order to make it taste just right نتخيل اننا نصنع ساندويتش فور اكزامبل ووردز ار ذوز انغريديانتس الكلمات هي المكونات and they need to be lined up in a particular order for example uh, uh, for example let's say just the, like the layers tabaqat fi a sandwich for example we can say the cat sat on the mat in the sandwich for example bread then cheese then lettuce okay uh, to create a tasty tasty sandwich so each word has its place to make the sentence work and we have the paradigmatic structure which is the alternative choices for words in a sentence for example the girl sits across your bed we can say uh, the boy or that boy um, you know instead of saying this girl it's it's the alternative choices البدائل, okay للكلمات. and then we have language types the first type is agglu agglutinative and in these languages, in this type, words are formed by combining affixial morphemes. Morphemes here is the right? And these morphemes can be prefixes, 
added to the beginning of the word or suffixes added to the end of the word or infixes added within a word with the base morpheme مع الجزء الأصلي okay for example let's say unloveliness on here it's the prefix and uh, here ness for example it's the suffix are added to the base morpheme law okay this is the first time we add affixal morphemes like prefixes like suffixes this is the first type and the second type is and flank and okay and the affixes are closely merged with the base morpheme becoming part of the word itself for example let's say men and mice and uh, women right imagine that we are going to turn them to the plural form women here become women we remove the o and we put instead the e okay uh, for example man if we are going to uh, make it plural we remove the a and we put e so the uh, the affixes are closely merged with the base morpheme forming the plural forms okay and here we have the isolating um they said that all words and all the morphemes represents a word for example you know english prepositions and conjunctions you know مثل حروف الجر every morpheme كل جزء يعتبرونه كلمة at, to, on, to, very, and every morpheme it's a word and we have the incorporating the last one uh, these languages have very long and morphologically complex words عندهم كلمات معقدة في التصاريف الخاصة بها right containing numerous bound, bound morphemes عندهم أرزاء كلمة عديدة ومعقدة مثل إسكيمو and some American Indian languages are cited as examples of incorporating languages due to their complex بفضل تعقدهم تعقد صيغ الكلمات due to their complex word forms so we reach the end of the video سبحانك الله وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك